public transportation, pets in public places before Fallensby Council news, sports jobs. On Monday, Fallensby Council learned of changes to the Wharton Transit Corporation's service to the city and were asked to eliminate a ban on dogs at parks and public events. Phil Gilchrist, the WTC's general manager, told council lower than anticipated participation has resulted in one of two buses being dropped from the public transportation agency's routes in the city. Gilchrist said ridership has been particularly low at Delisio Manor, an apartment complex occupied by many senior citizens, that he and others expected to be a major stop. Gilchrist said he will work with city officials in an effort to publicize a new schedule slated to begin next week for the bus's various stops. To stay up to date with latest top stories, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the button above this video. In addition to Delisio Manor, stops for the route will include the Fallensby Sheets, Burger King, James Funeral Home, the Fallensby Fire Department, the Wheeling Nippon Office, Mullenbach Funeral Home, Domino's Pizza, Dollar General Market, Garibaldi Lodge, Fallensby City Building, Fallensby Presbyterian Church and Risebeck's Brook Plaza. Fallensby riders also may take the bus to reach the following Wharton stops. Wharton Medical Center, Three Springs Plaza, Wharton Plaza, Kroger, Walmart and Change Incorporated. Gilcrest said some Wellsburg residents who work in Fallensby have expressed interest in riding the bus from their homes, so the WTC may look into extending its service there. Council also heard from Jason Courtney, a local dog trainer, who questioned the city's ban against dogs in parks and at public events. Courtney said he researched several cities, most of them in West Virginia, and found none had such a policy. He said the risk of a dog biting or otherwise harming a resident has been presented as the reason, but suggested the city couldn't be held liable for such an occurrence. The opinion was refuted by city manager Joe DiBartolomeo, who told him, there's always a risk of a liability for the city, because we have the biggest pocket, meaning an individual seeking damages is likely to sue the city because it has more financial resources than the dog's owner. City attorney Michael Gaudio agreed, saying, as soon as the city says come to a Parker event, we have liability. Resident Denise Arthurs told Courtney most dog owners bring them to the park on leashes and in hours when they are less likely to encounter children. Arthurs said though she owns and loves dogs, she understands the ban. She said while attending Fallensby Community Days, a dog tried to bite her. If I had a bad experience, it could traumatize a small child she said, adding some dog owners fail to clean up after them when they have defecated in public places. Courtney said the city can establish an ordinance against that, noting individuals can be fined $125 for doing so in one municipality. Arthurs asked, how do you identify someone's dog poop to fine them $125? DeBartolomeo said the city's police department isn't large enough to contend with violations of dog ordinances. Courtney said the city shouldn't ban all canines on the chance that one will commit an offense. 